Greetings to all. And in this video, I'm going to now try to run the this machine, pulse motor off a battery, and charge another battery, and swap them back and forth, and try and get a ballpark of where I am with that. And you know, I've, I've done something like that before, but I've never kind of looked at it formally, like, okay, you know, how is it actually doing? And I've talked about, you know, the various improvements that I'm looking to make with this in terms of, you know, bringing this end of the coil to bear and, and things like that. But I want to have as good an understanding of what's going on as I can. And that's actually not always the simplest thing. This, this simple little pulse motor, you know, it's, it's like a Russian doll of surprises. And I've, I've noted some of them in previous videos. But I was surprised again, uh, yet just a few minutes ago. So as I said, it's, can you say Russian doll? I guess that that's uh, would have been like a dating website a few years ago. <laughs> so um, I guess it's like a glass onion of surprises, just layer after layer. Every time you think you figured it out. So before you know, like firing up the 3d printer and all this stuff it's like how are we just you know charging batteries with this thing set up this way so just to go over this real quick i got the magnets facing down now just for the heck of it to give me a little bit smaller air gap i don't know exactly what the air gap should be and i won't go over this in great detail because you know i've talked about how to build it and everything else but here you have your hall effect sensor and you know this is all just sort of jury rigged at the moment but it's it works fine so your hall effect sensor your arduino those are two solid state relays the magnets are north south north south so it's bipolar this pulses one way and the pulses the other and it drives the rotor around with pulses now out there i've got a uh, full wave bridge rectifier and that full wave bridge rectifier is gathering both the flyback when this coil collapses per faraday's law there's a, a current which flies back and because it's going north south north south i have a full wave bridge rectifier to capture that flyback and it's also capturing the north south north south that's going from this spinning past and what I've done now is I've just put a little 10 UF cap across there so what I'm going to do before I actually start putting the batteries in and seeing you know what happens how am I doing you know is it like you know this one goes down completely and that one goes up 5% or this one goes down completely that one goes up 95% um, so before I see where I'm at with that I thought I'd just look at Okay, what's your amp draw? You know, the voltage will be constant. What's your amp draw that you're using? What's the voltage coming out of here? And then the second part will be, okay, what's your amp draw? What's this? What's the amps that's coming out of here with, say, like a 100 ohm resistor? Because I think 100 ohms would probably be about the resistance of a dead battery. I don't, I don't know, but probably around there. So in a minute, we'll... We'll fire this bad boy up at, you know, a whopping three volts to start with. I, I bought these um, new rechargeable 9-volt batteries, so I'm going to be looking at it at 9 and 18 volts. But, you know, to get the lay of the land, um, you know, why, why spin it fast where something might fly off or, you know, if you have some sort of short, then you, like, fried the Arduino or something. So there's, you know, you can, you can see what you need at three volts, I think. Um, and then um, I'll also put it up to 9 volts. So let's first just take a look at the voltage coming out of here. And as I said, this, this surprised me. I didn't know this one. So our meter is across here. Um, you know, it's just draining out from the last time I was running it. I'm going to turn this on and give this a little spin there. And then our milliamp meter will settle down. You know, while I think of it, just a moment. I just put a couple little marks on where the the sensor is there. Um, so I noted in a previous video that you know there's a spot where you're really drawing very few milliamps. You know, this is a good spot there. Um, 
and because the air gap is constant with this sort of setup you can see that it's it's because of where the coil is in terms of the angle with the sensor so it's that timing so let me put it back to where it was there before so here's a decent spot and we're drawing you know between one or two milliamps and we're at, you know we're at three volts so we're drawing three to six milliwatts so you know for five milliwatts that's not bad <laughs> however when we look at what's in the cap it's saying 2.6 volts it's trying to climb a little bit higher that's pretty blah but now watch this this is what surprised me I'm gonna move this over just a tad just a tad more okay let's give it a minute you see what's happening so let's give this some time okay now we're, we're up to seven volts and climbing in the cap and if anything that's lower I would say that's like one milliwatt so now we're drawing uh, one milliamp so we're drawing three milliwatts that's up to seven point and eight and it's going higher so let's move it a little further this way okay focus now we're we're still at one milliwatt that hasn't budged and now we're at 14 volts in the cap so i'm just gonna i'm just moving it like a half centimeter at, at, at a time and you know i mean i was sort of how should I put it? Getting ahead of my skis in a previous video, I'm saying, oh, you know, you gotta just hunt around for, you know, where this is lowest. Yeah, you hunt around for where this is lowest, but it's looking like there's sort of a dark side of the moon or a light side of the moon where it's lowest because we're still drawing one milliamp. Now we have 24 volts. Now eventually the the amp draw goes up, but there's a part in that what I was calling the sweet spot before which is you know there's like a couple centimeters to it where one place you're getting nothing and another place you're getting a lot what I would suspect that has to do I, I don't know but I would guess that you know with the magnet spinning past somehow the coil can't collapse well unless it's in the right sweet spot within the sweet spot let me see how high I can get it with um you know that's kind of cool one milliamp three milliwatts and i know i mean it's just voltage but 26 and climbing so now it may be just starting to inch up a tiny bit i think we're maybe at like now well, it's like one or i thought it was 1.5 we're at 42 volts and climbing in the cap so let me continue okay so now we're drawing just about two milliamps and we're at 71 volts so you know trust me I, I have no idea what I'm doing yeah <laughs> and so the question becomes then do you want to go for the spot where you can get the highest voltage even if you're drawing like five milliamps or do you want to go for the spot where the milliamps hadn't started climbing but you still had a good you know 30 volts coming out of here let me see how high i mean this is three volts input 72 out let me see how high i can get the voltage so here we're drawing 10 milliamps 147 volts climbing three milliamp uh, three three volts input 150 volts out the rotor you can hear it's starting to slow down though so that that it'll just come to a stop so i don't think we can have it there but it's like where where do you put it so what I'm gonna do is I don't know what I'm gonna do okay so I, I put it back to where it's drawn about a milliamp and we're at 36 and still climbing maybe make it close to like 40 volts with um, 3 in but again i don't know if that's the best place i mean maybe you want to draw five milliamps and and this is 150 volts don't know and, and you know 
I wouldn't get too excited about this. Like if I if I short across a hundred ohms this cap. I mean, this voltage goes to, you know, like 0.5, so it, it, it 0.6 or something like that. So technically, it's not really putting out very much at all. I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to do the math on that, but it's not. Well, it's slowing the heck down, but I kind of take that back. So 0.6 volts divided by 10 divided by 100 be like 6 milliamps. 6 milliamps. That's not too shabby. And our input voltage was fine. So now now let's not do it. Let's let's just look at let's look at amp draw now. Okay, so the coil's in the place where I said, well, that's a pretty good spot. And the sensor's in the same place. Now if I disconnect this, you know the amp draw will go back down to one. If I connect it, here's what I'm seeing across a hundred ohm resistor. So that's out of the full wave bridge rectifier, and that's what's there. So they don't seem far off. I don't know what to make of that. So again, if it weren't under load at 9 volts, it would really be flying. You wouldn't draw many milliamps. But if you load it, it's going to slow down. And then what you, you kind of see here across the 100 ohm resistor is that is what you're drawing. And yeah, that's milliamps out. But again, I don't know exactly what to make of that. But so that's like 35, and that's like 32. So um, now I've got these new 9 volt batteries, and I look for the ones like you know lower capacitance because this it's still going to go on forever. So these are like 270 milliamp hours, and we'll be drawing um, three milliamps. So you know hopefully it won't take more than a day. And I've discharged one of them, and one of them's fully charged. So in a minute, I'll set that up where it's running off of this and charging another one, and then just see what it does. Only other thing I'd say is I I put in, put like a, a dead battery in you know series here with the milliamp meter, and you know I couldn't really see anything. You know it was hardly showing any milliamps, and I don't know if that's bad or good. I mean you could say well. It's hard to say. I mean, I know that's got to be 100, 200 volts. So it's hard to say there's not enough volts to get in there. And maybe you want it to be zero because that means all of the electricity is being converted electrochemically into recharging the battery. So in other words, maybe if this is zero, that's like 100% charge acceptance. So I don't know, you know, like I said, I put it in here, and you know it's like five milliamps or something. I don't know if you want that high or low. I would start to think you probably want it low, which means all the electricity is going into charging the battery, and and none's making it all the way through. Okay, so we got this battery that I charged, and it's sitting at 9.16, 9.15, and then. Yeah, this battery it discharged. It's like at 8.13. I would have been happier if it was at you know like 7.8 or something like that. So most of the way, you know, maybe 70, 80 percent discharged. And this one's charged. And so, you know, I'm just going to run it here, and I kind of want to get an idea. You know, I'm not looking for too much. It's just more like does this one discharge, and this goes from you know. What did I say it was? 8.13 to like 8.25, or am I in the ballpark? All right, a brief update, and I I screwed up on this test, but I'm gonna go with it a little while longer. And what I'm saying, I charged this with this, you know, nine volt battery charger, and it it shoved it up to 9.13 volts. So I decided to look up the specifications on these um, Tenergy 9 volt batteries. That's the fully charged voltage is 8.4 volts. And so let's just go to the spreadsheet. Yeah, I mean this one only went from 8.13 to 8.43. This dropped from 
8.16 to 8.53. But this this voltage, you know, I'm, I don't know what you call it, like a surface charge or something. I mean, it's fully charged at 8.4. So I apologize. There'll have to be a part two. And I'll actually have to be charging, discharging the batteries in their working range rather than trying to overcharge batteries, which is what's going on now. But even with this, you're recapturing 50%. And you do the math there that minus that and that minus that and you know what's really caught my attention is this um, piezo piezo however you say it uh, piezoelectric effect and if you haven't watched the second video I I made on you know home brewing batteries you might consider watching that video it's certainly the topic has my interest and i saw there where you know wood is actually a, a piezoelectric material and then it's like what are you know more piezoelectric materials and it goes back to you know where where it was discovered with rochelle salts so i ordered some rochelle salt and I'm currently growing some Rochelle salt crystals. Yeah, it's sort of, you know, if you want to be a wizard, you want to grow crystals. So. Yes, Saruman. 